Welcome back to the UK Franchising Podcast. On today's episode, we talk with Lee Chester in Walsley at the Leopard Pie Pizzeria. I think it's key to the success of anything. If you go to something half assed you're going to get half assed results. And we get people coming in and saying, oh, you're not going to do pasta, you're not going to do chicken. No, we're going to do pizza. I'm going to do the best pizza that you ever had. I can tell you our recipe. You wouldn't be able to go home and make our pizza. It's about more than that. You know, it's an equation, isn't it? It's a mathematical equation. Temperatures, water temperatures, room temperatures. Because at the end, yeah, we are transforming flour, water, yeast and soda. They are very basic products to the best pizza. We are delivering the best pizza in Manchester now. We're delivering the best pizza in the UK. It's going to get there. It, like I was saying, it's just a matter of time. We will become the best in the country. I want to become the best pizza in the world. Let's see what we can do. I know there is big global brands out there that need knocking off the perch because they deliver a crap product. So it's time to flip it all. It's time to bring a proper, a proper product to the market and send it around the world. We spoke about exactly what goes into making one of the UK's best pizzas. We talked about Lee's plans for the future in terms of growth across the UK and into other countries, including the USA. And we spoke about exactly who Lee's looking for to start a Leopard Pie franchise. This is the UK Franchising Podcast. Enjoy. Would you two mind introducing yourselves? Lee, um, I created Leopard Pie about four years ago in my kitchen, um, just because I wanted to get a better pizza out there into the marketplace and into my own stomach. Okay. I'm Alan, uh, head chef of Leopard Pie in Worsley. Mm-hmm. Been involved here in pizza a long time now and very excited of this journey with, with Lee. Okay. And where are we today? Today we are in Leopard Pie Worsley, the first restaurant that we opened. We've been open now January for takeaway and then probably three months now for the restaurant. Why do you call it Leopard Pie? So when I first came up with the idea, um, when I was researching Neapolitan pizza, way back, years and years ago now, the leopard spotting is when the flames go over the oven, on the top of the oven, and they create little black dots. And in Neapolitan pizza making, it's called leoparding. So you get black dots on the top and black dots on the bottom. And then when we create the business, I had a dream that we could send this thing to bigger countries than the UK, i.e. places like America. In America, the pizza is a pie, leopard pie. And that's it. It's no more complicated than that. Uh, you started making pizzas during the lockdown. What was the reaction to the pizzas? Well, we started before lockdown. It started years ago when I just couldn't get... I like a pizza. That's not a lie. Uh, and we, I was sick to death of getting takeaway pizzas. Just constantly, you know, you Mario's Pizzeria, it's fake sugar-filled dough, horrible ingredients, cheddar cheese. So we went to Italy, we tried a few pizzas, and we're like, oh, we need to get this pizza in the UK. Um, and it, it goes a lot further than that, you know. My daughter was ill, we lived in hospital for a long time. So we, we kind of dropped off the journey for a while. Um, and then during lockdown, at the start of lockdown, we all, everyone had a lot of time on their hands. So we built like a small pizza oven in the garden, just as, just as a hobby, just to see how it went, what happened. It wasn't a business idea. It was literally just to make ourselves some pizzas on a weekend. And then if you remember when everyone's banging pans for the NHS um, on a Thursday night, we decided to do a pizza party for the street one Thursday. And um, people just started posting it on Instagram, started posting the, the pizzas on Instagram. And then um, I'd get messages on Instagram saying, oh, can we get some pizzas? Can we get some pizzas? And I was like, no, it's not a thing. There's, n- there's not a business. So we did it a couple of times. And then me and my other half had a couple of bottles of wine one night. And we're like, should we just make it a thing? So we just made it a thing. We set up an Instagram, came up with Leopard Pie, the name. And then we did 100 pizzas Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week. And we just sold out. And here we are now. And today, we're, I think you've been running the restaurant for 12 weeks now. Uh, what's the growth look like since you started the restaurant? So we started, well, we opened the restaurant, the building opened in January 2022. Um, we did about 12 weeks of takeaway. And then Al came on board at the end of the takeaway yeah. times. Um, for the restaurant. So I think we're about 12 weeks now, aren't we? 12, 13 weeks into the restaurant. 
being open. Um, and it's 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 going from strength to strength. We've we we book out. So you, you can't get a table over weekends. We implement the booking system now, so that people can book, and so that we can involve a computer to actually work out which tables are free and which are not, rather than human error taking part. Um, and then at weekends we we have to turn the phone off sometimes on a Saturday night and a Friday night just because we're so busy we can't we can't take the takeaway orders as well as the restaurant. It's too much demand, which is a good thing. So you know, it's a good problem to have. Um, yeah, so it's been it's been good. It's been it's been hectic. We've had our ups and our downs. You know, finding the staff, which anybody that's watching this will understand in the restaurant trade. That's probably the hardest thing is mm. to find the right people. But I think we're getting there, now, aren't we? So, what do you do at the uh, here, Alan? Well, at the moment, I think I'm the man in charge of making sure the pizzas come out as good as they can. Like the, our strive to perfection is is the first thing. So, yeah, yeah, delivering the quality. Al's Al's come from a, a pizzeria background. You know, he's been head chef at some big players. Our biggest thing every single day, seven days a week, is the quality of the product that we produce. Constant. And that, that's why I love Al. That's why Al's coming on for the journey because he's, we, he is the intersection between my business brain and Al's piece of brain. And that's where it, it, it works, just there, our sweet spot. So I know if I'm not here, Al's got everything covered. And it's so important for me like that. And I know that you know, we, we could open a pizza restaurant and it could just be like 90% of the other pizza restaurants, it could just be average, or we can just be the best. Mm. Simple, no apologies, the best pizzeria in Manchester, in the UK, wherever we want to go. And that's what I want to achieve. And that's what Al's bringing to the party. He's bringing the reassurance to me that we will be the best. I think we probably already are, but we don't shout about it enough. Mm -hmm. So what sets you apart in uh, the pizza? What's, what's, what makes it so special and what's the process of making a leopard pie pizza? Well, I'll, let, I'll talk about it, but I'll tell you where it came from with me. So I, I've had all the pizza restaurants in Manchester, further afield, the big players, the small players. And I think for me, I wanted to do something different. So I wanted a dough that didn't make you feel like crap after you've eaten it. You know, we've all been to these big brands that begin with D and P, and we've all had their pizzas, and we've all got a hangover, and then you've got a hangover to deal with, and you order one of these pizzas, and you've got a food hangover to deal with shortly after, and didn't want any of that. I wanted you to feel good after you've eaten our pizza. So then we've, uh, we've got our three-day dough process, which is our secret, but I'll tell you a bit more about it. Yeah, well, we use the bigger two days fermentation from the bigger, another extra day for the dough is a total of 72 hours. Basically no sugars left, which is one of, is one of the main reasons why all these pizzas are not very healthy because we are just filled with sugars. Our yeah. process, as the fermentation gets rid of probably 90% of all the sugars. Do people like feel feel that the pizza is healthier when, when they have it. Oh yeah. It, I mean, we don't we at the moment we don't shout enough about the benefits of our pizza. We should do, we will do shout more about it. You know, fermenting the dough for a longer period of time, um, it's good for your gut bacteria, you know, your microbiome, prebiotics that are, you know you're creating in, in that, that structure, that process. People always come and say they don't feel like they've got a bit of food coma afterwards. You know, we make a big pizza. We make a 14 inch pizza, you know, bigger than most places, but we want to give value for money in there. Nobody walks out of this place feeling like they've had a horrendous pizza experience. They know that they've had something good. Our staff talk about it. We have a fully open kitchen behind us. The customers constantly come in and they talk to the chefs so there's always engagement and that's what I, that's why we did an open kitchen so that you can see it. there's nothing hidden. If we have a good day, we have a good day. If we have a bad day, they see a bad day. And that's just how it is. We've got a 
table right next to the kitchen. Um, people sit there and they literally watch every single thing happen. They watch the dough come out of the fridge, they watch the dough get opened, the toppings go on into the oven. Kids coming up all the time, looking at the oven, looking at the fire. And that's what we want for every single establishment. For me, it's an experience, you know, we've got Al and the guys that create the experience through the food, but it's also a visual, it's like the theatre, you know, I want you to see everything. I want you to see, if you stand at the end of that counter, you can literally watch your pizza cook in 60 seconds flat, from dough to plate to table. You know, if, if we're busy, it's not 60 seconds, don't get me wrong, but if we made a pizza right now, it would be made within 180 seconds from start to finish. Oh. And that's experience. And uh, do you get a lot of people coming back and recommending? How's that sort of grown as you've um, been open? I mean, we get people, we've got regulars, people travel to come here now. The, the things, the best thing for me personally, and I will know this is when people from Italy come, and we get, we get more and more Italians, yeah. aren't we now? More and more Italians. I can't speak Italian. Al's Italian. I literally yeah. make sure that Al goes over to these people and he asks. You know, we had a guy, didn't we, outside? Yeah, the feedback is amazing always. Like, they can find a, a pizza as good as what we do here in Italy, which always is it's good to hear when you are so far. Because all our ingredients, they come from, from Napoli, most of them. So being able to reprodu re reproduce a pizza even better than how they do it when they have the ingredients just over there, it's a big challenge for us, but I think we're doing, we're doing a great job in that, that mm -hmm. point of view. And how important is it to you guys to use sort of Italian stuff and Italian ingredients in everything that you use? Well, I think uh, like Fior di Latte, like the flour, Flour, you must come from, from Napoli. The grain in the UK is not as strong. So you won't allow us to do seven to two hours fermentation. So we sort of need uh, that quality of produce to make the best that we can do. And it's, it's authentic as well, then, isn't it? It's, we're a Neapolitan pizza restaurant. So the products need to be Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. Everything comes from Italy. Yeah. The tomato, San Marzano, is, is sweeter than the tomato you can find anywhere else in the world. So adding just a little bit of salt, is, that, that's all we do. We keep a natural product and only in only 60 seconds in the oven, we also keep the nutrients in the products we use. Because if, if we are investing or spending more money in ingredients and then we are just going to treat them like any other ingredient, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So we invest in the best and then we also handle it in the better way. Yeah, things like tomatoes, like you, you go to some places, lots of places, and they just blitz tomatoes in a blender, in, in food, yeah. whatever, to make this tomato. Mm -hmm. But they're blending seeds, they're blending the tomato, that, that makes bitterness. You know, we, we, we literally, by hand, all our tomatoes with the moulin, mm, yeah. just just grind them all out. So it's just no bitterness, just pure taste, pure quality, and and that's people can taste that. You know, we ask, we get people just asking for a pot of the tomato sauce, don't yeah, we? On the yeah. table because they like the taste of it so much. Mm -hmm. I have never been to a pizza restaurant in my life, or a pizza takeaway and gone. Oh, I wish I just had a bit of that sauce. Mm. This doesn't happen. So to get that feedback from customers, without actually thinking about it, they're, they're, they're unknowingly asking for that product again. They're not asking for HP sauce. They're asking for other brands that are available. They're asking for our sauce again. You know, and that's really good. And, and it isn't a secret recipe. It's tomatoes, a tiny bit of salt to make the flavor pop. That's it. There's no cooking, there's no oil, there's no sugars, nothing. Just quality. The less worked any of the product is, the better. You know, you go to a lot of these places, obviously our vegetables come from the UK or wherever those vegetables come from that time of year. And apart from tomatoes, your basil, your rocket, onions, um, peppers. But we do things differently with them as well. So 
everywhere else you go, I keep referring to everywhere else you go, it's just sliced mushroom, it's just sliced onion, it's just sliced pepper, raw. We roast it all in the oven first as part of our prep during the day to bring the flavours out in that product. So the mushrooms are portable like mushrooms, so we roast the mushrooms in some thyme, some olive oil in the wood-fired oven. The same with the peppers. We caramelise the onions early in the day. So when you're getting a pizza that's got peppers, onions, a mushroom on it, it's all it's all roasted. It's that that depth of flavours there. You're not just getting some sliced mushroom and hoping that it cooks and some sliced pepper and it's still being that tart, you know, bitter bitter onion or whatever. The, we're putting that extra effort into mm-hmm. bringing the flavours out in our products and it shows and I, th- that's what I wanted to achieve from day one is to do more and be better and to be better you have to do more in my opinion you can't you can't do the same as everybody else and expect a different result you know we have to do more we have to put more love we have to put more care more attention into our products and that's what we do granted we have to have chefs come in earlier because chefs need to prep the mushrooms prep the peppers prep the onions but it 100% pays for itself in the fact that the reputation that they're getting, the quality of the product that goes out, it doesn't even make sense to even consider never doing that. We never would. And we'd expect everybody else to follow the same thing because it's just doing more to give more, to be better. Uh, and I say it again, but we want to deliver the best products. We are delivering the best products. I know we are mm-hmm. now after six months. And would you say that's just the completely the key to the success is that the attention to the product itself. I think it's key to the success of anything. If you go to something half arsed you're gonna get half arsed results. If you go 100% uncompromising, and we get people coming in saying, oh, you're not gonna do pasta, you're not gonna do chicken. No, we're gonna do pizza, but we're gonna do the best pizza that you've ever had. Fact, simple as that. One thing, done well, end of story. Fantastic. And then if someone comes in and they're gluten free or gluten intolerant and are vegetarian or vegan, is there options available for them too? Yeah, yeah, we've got, so we buy in gluten free bases. I don't really know many places that make a gluten free dough for a restaurant because it's, it's really hard being honest. You, how many gluten free bases do you need a day, a week? You know, so you would have to plan it three days in advance. It's, it's not physically possible to do that, but we do know that there's a market for out there Every single person um, loves knowing that they can get a gluten-free pizza if they're friends and tolerant. One of my best friends came in and he said it was the best gluten-free base he'd ever had. They are from Italy as well. They're not UK based, they're Italian gluten-free bases. Um, and they just get the same care, the same attention as everything else. We freeze them and they come out. Well, we've never had one complaint, have we? No. Not one no. about the gluten-free bases. Um, vegan. We do three pizzas vegan, but you could have pretty much anything vegan. You could start off with a margarita with vegan cheese, then add mushrooms, then add peppers, add onions, any combination of three, olives, capers, whatever you want. There's, there's probably 150 variants of a vegan pizza if you wanted to go into that depth about working out the different ratios or whatever. So yeah, we, we've got everyone covered with vegan. We do vegan enduya, vegan mozzarella, fior di latte, and they come back, we sell a lot of vegan products because they come here because they know they can get a top quality vegan pizza. Yeah, and I see on the social channels, there's a lot of um, vegans actually talking about leopard pizza because mm. they, you, you serve a great product and that's something that they look for. So I think there's a lot of return customers there. In terms of actually producing the pizzas, is it an easy process? Is Can anyone just come and make a leopard pie pizza? <laughs> oh yeah, anyone could do it. No, <laughs> no. Oh, like, I'll talk to <laughs> Uh, well, you definitely need some sort of background or knowledge to get involved in this style of pizza. And the more you know, the more you're gonna like. The more you realize, you need to to keep learning about this job because the moment yeah, we strive to perfection, so it's no it's no easy for everybody that gets involved in leopard pies through our own company-owned stores or through franchise in the future. Is we're gonna have a training academy, aren't we? I yeah. think that's going to be key because everyone who comes that's come from a pizza background has their own preconceived ideas, their own preconceived methods of even just opening a dough. We have our way that we want it done. Al knows how he wants it doing. So I think I'm right in saying that we need to take 
we, we can go one or two ways. You can take someone with no experience and put them on a full, full training path. Or you can take someone with some experience and you can show them our way. So you're saving yourself a little bit of time yeah. on that person. But at the end of the day, that person still needs to learn the leopard pie method of taking care of the product. It's as simple as that, isn't it? If you don't take care of the products from the dough in the mixer, the hydration being zero on the side and the pizza counter, the way that you open the pizza, the way you turn the pizza, but it goes into the oven, all those things, every single pizza chef, would you agree, has mm. got different methods. And we've had different pizza chefs here and we're slowly but surely bringing them around to our way of doing things. Yeah. It's a fly in your hand. Yeah, we really take care of every single step from starting from the bigger, making the dough, like every single step has got a massive impact in the final result. The oven, like if the pizza stays in the oven, five more seconds or 10 more seconds that what you should do, what you should stay. It's gonna burn in the side. So it's a very, like, um, you need to really care about every single detail if you want yeah. to obtain the best. A mistake can be made really quickly. Like I was saying, if that pizza stays in only five seconds, you know, one, two, three, four, five, burn. Mm -hmm. That's why the chefs all need the skills to, and that's one pizza. If there's seven pizzas in the oven, they need the skills to move the pizzas around the oven, into different spaces. Now, granted, when when we go to different locations, we are setting ourselves up to wood fired, to gas, to electric ovens, depending upon the location. So that if something is under a huge block of flats and wood doesn't work, we can put that in there. But it comes down to the same thing, it's the care and attention. It doesn't matter if it's gas, it doesn't matter if it's electric, it doesn't matter if it's wood. You know, we like wood because it's really authentic. The skills that the chefs have, that Al teaches us, the chefs, we can get from those three different vehicles to create a pizza, wood, electric, or gas, we can get the same product. But I'll guarantee you, if I take you to a pizzeria that's using an electric oven now, they ain't, they're not getting the same products that we're creating. And that's because of the skill mm -hmm. of the chefs that we're creating, that Al's gonna create through the franchise, through Leopard Pie, and also, yeah, it's also, oh, sorry to interrupt, it's also related to the, the efficiency that we can bring to the pizzeria, because uh, working with a very high hydration dough, the amount of time that, if you've got the skills, the amount of time to stretch the pizza will be way, way lower than if the dough needs, like, slapping or in the oven the same, 500 degrees, when we have six pizzas in the oven, then one minute and a half, two minutes, they are all out, which in a normal electric oven, probably <clears throat> you will need four or five minutes yeah. to take them out. Mm -hmm. and we can see that in busy services. Uh, we could do 60, 70 pizzas an hour. So in three, four hours, two chefs, they could do 250 pizzas. And that's only because of how we make the dough and, and how we cook yeah. our pizza. How it works with the ovens. Um, and how does that affect the bottom line, being able to get so many pizzas out so quickly? It, it, it's good. I mean, you, if you think about higher hydration dough, there's less flour, more water. Water's cheaper than flour. So that improves the profits on the bottom line straight away. More water, less flour, higher profit margins, lower cost. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of speed and being able to get more pizzas through the oven, again, you can get more pizzas because more water, it goes through even faster. Everything, or everything that we're trying to create around this business is about efficiencies. We open the business to grow. We open to be the best. The best pizza, good profit margins, best product. I think the way that, we, the way that we're going, it creates that every single, every week, every day we talk about efficiencies, don't we? How yeah. we can we become more efficient? Constantly having conversations about it literally every single day of our lives that's all we talk about um but i think it's key especially when we want to grow the business especially when we want to introduce people that want to buy into it and people are going to open several leopard pies we want them to understand that the way that we're building this helps them make more profit it has to um 
we have virtually zero waste in the business. I don't know many other businesses and other restaurants that have zero waste. The majority, if not 100% of our waste, is the crust that a customer occasionally leaves or half a pizza that a kid leaves that he can't finish. Most of it gets taken home, doesn't it, in a box. Yeah. You know, so we have a small waste bin in the back and that's it every day. We don't throw away any meats, we don't throw away any vegetables. Every single thing gets used. I think that is going to be key in moving the business forward to anyone investing. They, can, that, they don't have to think about the waste, you know, how much money we're throwing away every day. I can tell you now, the answer is zero. What are the profit margins on the things like the drinks and the pizzas and the sides? So, something we've not spoken about um, is our signature margarita. So, it's made with limes, it's mixed. I created the mix one day. It's not a recipe off the internet that anybody can copy. It's a bespoke mix of a certain amount of products that goes into a certain machine that only the staff here know about. Um, and our frozen margaritas, we sell so much of it. We, we 40, 50 litres, 60 litres a weekend, easily. Um, and there's a good profit margin in it as well. Um, the profit margin on the pizzas is a lot higher. Um, some of our pizzas, the cost, well, a marinara, is probably cost us about 70p to make, retails at nine pounds. Um, our most expensive pizza is probably the carne. Um, we sell it at 16 pounds. It's got four meats, uh, salami napoli, and do ya. Finocchione and um, wild Cingalia, wild boar. Um, that's probably the highest cost pizza at £1.60. So, you know, we're, we're up there in the 80% mm -hmm. um, profit margins. So it's good. It's, it's, it's a good profit margin. Really good. And I know that we don't sell the cheapest pizza, but we sell the best quality. Mm -hmm. And not one person has ever sat in this building and said that pizza is too expensive. It's never happened. Mm -hmm. And that speaks volumes, I think. Yeah. And uh, you also have some great side products as well that you've developed. Do you want to talk a little bit about those? Ooh, honey butter rings. <laughs> honey butter rings, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. like, so when years ago, um, you know, Alan's perfected the honey butter ring method since, but a few years ago, I knew that I wanted to create this, this, this pizza and I knew I wanted to create the best pizza. But then I also know that we're in England Every single person in England loves a garlic bread. We all love a garlic bread. You love a garlic bread? I like a garlic bread. I like a garlic bread. Oh, you will eat one. <laughs> but, you know, he's Italian. Well, so I wanted to I wanted to get famous for garlic bread because I knew we were going to smash the pizza out of the park. So I've got this list on my phone. Um, it's probably three and a half, four years old now of all these garlic products that I wanted to create. I won't list them all because they've not all been trademarked yet. But... You know, there's a few things like leopard sticks, you know, these dough sticks. Um, we've got garlic bread, we've got our own version of a garlic bread, um, our gondolas. Um, they, that's, that's just been a, a perfected. Of a round base, we took it out and made it a gondola shape. Then by far, probably the highest selling product is our honey butter rings. And um, I had this note that said I wanted to create this, like a butter bath. That's what it was in my head when I created it. And one Tuesday, we, we were just setting up and I said, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make this thing. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I wanted to create this butter bath. And um, so I got, I got some dough. I'm not gonna go too far into our secret process and recipe. And I made this thing and it, and it puffed up correct. And then we put some um, of our own, gar our own garlic butter. We make our own homemade garlic butter. And that went into the middle of it. And we put it in the oven in, and it works, just works straight away. And then we put some of our honey on it and we put parmesan on it. And one of the um, kitchen guys ate it and he was like, oh my God, what's this? And we all tried it, didn't yeah. we? I remember the day, we yeah, all tried it and we were like, what? What have we made here? Yeah. And so many people, you know, I, I, I'll wait tables on a Friday, Saturday night because I like the interaction, interaction with the people. So many people have said to us, that is the best thing I've ever eaten. Yeah. Wow. All the time. I guarantee it'll be said four or five times a week, every single week, that's the best thing I've ever eaten. Amazing. Some people say it's better than pizza, but it's a different product than pizza. But yeah, so you get two, 
you get two to share. It's great to share. We have three versions. We have the original with the cheese, with the cheese and andouille. In fact, you've got four because you could just have andouille on your own, but we don't really sell much of that. It's normally the cheese and andouille. Um, it's probably pound for pound the highest profit margin of yeah. all of our products for what we sell it for. Yeah, it's we probably mega. probably cost us 80 p to make. Yeah, 80p. 11, 12 and 13. 30, 11, 12 and 13 quid, yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. yeah. We, they can they, also be made uh, vegan, right. which it helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what sort of percent of people are sort of buying that as a size? Well, 50% oh, of the yeah, tables. Yeah. We, so many people order yeah. so many. I mean, we've never done the maths and looking at the numbers of it, but we just, we just know we sell a lot. Mm -hmm. It's all made from the same dough. It's just a different process, but it's made at the point before going into the oven. There's a special technique that we've yeah. well, so created. Working. I feel like it's every single customer who ordered for me that I work in the kitchen. <laughs> like I'm constantly making them. So I know it's not every single table, but yeah, the amount of people that order them is. They just look good as yeah. well. Like they look, the, the people post them on Instagram all the time. And also, with, yeah, when people, they come in the restaurant to sit down and they see already, maybe them in the past waiting there like, oh, what's that? I want that. So they go straight to the table and order them. Great. Um, and I suppose that's shared a lot on social media. What's the are people sharing this stuff on social media a lot? Is there a lot of interaction on, on your yeah, yeah, we get we get loads. So one of the one of the things that we're we're doing now is we've got a new menu created. We need a lot more calls to action on the menu. Um the menu is now gonna say please share Instagram eats first, which is something I came up with. Um just all these things because we want the consumer to post the interaction with us so that their friends see it. It's, all, it's great when we post things because we get hundreds of likes every single time, but it, there's nothing better than when a customer sits at table 14 and takes a big picture of all their food and tells all their mates where they're eating. Mm -hmm. That's what we want every single person. And you're never gonna get everyone to do it, but that's that's the best way to our, our, our organic growth. Mm -hmm. we, we've, we've done, we've invested in, no social media company at the moment, nothing at all. It's just us, isn't it? Yeah. Taking photos. We've got <laughs> spare time. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. little fake photo shoots outside with the flowers and things. It's just us, but it's working, you know. We've, we've, we've tried not very hard with socials and just through pure customer interaction, we're nearly at, you know, 5,000, which in the grand scheme of social media isn't a lot, but in terms of a restaurant that's been open for 12 weeks, mm -hmm. 5,000 followers, it's pretty good going, I think, anyway. And that's on Instagram, huh? Yeah, Instagram, our Instagram's linked to our Facebook, so everything that goes onto Instagram goes onto Facebook as well. I've just done a TikTok account this week, so I'm gonna start learning that because I understand that that is the way that things need to go, how to grow the best, grow the fastest, the way that that media is going now. Um, so we will be doing that. I will learn it. I will learn it. Yeah. And then eventually we will, eventually get to a point where we need a company to do it for us. Mm -hmm. But now I'm having fun enjoying taking the videos, learning reels on Instagram, that sort of stuff. It's good, mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah, it's it's like, a, it's an experience, you know, coming here and having this pizza. And another thing that I'd like to talk about is the oven and the graffiti. Do you want to talk a little bit about the ovens? Yeah, so all of our, so leopard pie is, is a few different components. You walk in, you'll see a neon sign you'll see a leopard pie branded neon in every single one of our units if not one two um there will be burnt wood so we have a wood fired oven so part of our shop fit is burnt wood so sugi ban technique which is a japanese and asian japanese method of preserving wood so you get this charred almost like alligator skin look on the wood you'll see that in every single of our units brick and then every single leopard pie that you ever go to will have a graffiti oven, which I love, especially for going to a franchise because we don't specify what you need to, to do on the oven. We'd never specify. We just want you to get a graffiti artist and for it to look really cool. Do what you want. You know, we're in Manchester. We might get a Hacienda theme on the next one. Not too sure yet, but we're going to get some cool graffiti artists to come in, spray it, tag it, and every six months, eight months, change it. It might turn into a big Santa at Christmas. Not sure yet, but you know, <laughs> things things like that. It's, I want you to come into Leopard Pie and have an experience. Mm -hmm. 
not just come in and order pizza, eat a pizza and leave and go home. I want you to come and be like, that place is brilliant. It's mega there. Let's tell my mates, let's go back. And that, I think that's what we're creating. You know, people yeah. come back all the time now, all the time. Kids love the oven. You know, every single leopard pie that ever exists will have a graffiti oven. That's our thing. I've never seen one before. That's our thing. Can't trademark it, but. Mm. It's fantastic though. You've made this incredible product. Um, was the intention always to franchise or was, it, was the intention just to make a great product? I've always wanted to create more than just one restaurant. So the intent was always there to do something with the growth potential. That's the reason pie's in it, because I want it to end up in America. We don't call a pizza a pie over here, but they do over the States. It makes, it makes sense over there. You know, we get people coming in all the time going, oh, is it a pizza or is it a pie? And we have to explain to people that no, it's a pizza, but it's just a cool way. You know, don't be like everybody else, call it a pie. Every, every communication. If I write pizza, it's because I've slipped up. Whenever I want to say pizza, I should be saying pie. Um, and that's it, you know, we call the buildings the pie factory. We want it to grow, it's gonna grow. I wanna send it around the UK, around the world, wherever people eat pizza, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Just the best products. I know it'll work in America. We will end up in America. We've got to get the UK market sewn up first. Um, there's nobody out there, to my knowledge, that's creating the same quality products as us in a franchise organization. Um, definitely, there's a few restaurant chains that are doing some good, some good stuff, um, but they're backed by the big boys. So we're the underdog, mm -hmm. it's gonna come. You won't see us coming, but we'll come and we'll get to the top that way. Fantastic. And what uh, style of franchise have you decided on for Leopard Pie, the best route forwards? Um, so, like we were saying before, our, our biggest thing is quality. So, this isn't being disrespectful to anybody, but we're not really interested in, in anybody who wants to come along and convert a pizza and kebab shop into a leopard pie because that's not what we're aiming at we're aiming at you know someone wants to open three restaurants and three takeaways that that kind of person the person's quite experienced in the hospitality industry they might own a franchise business already and they have skills in the restaurant trade they're the people the people with just a higher net worth that are going to invest the money the time and the passion like we have into pushing this product around where they want the money's there for them to make, the profit's there for them to make, 100% undoubtedly there. So we want the right people to come along. And also, I think, I think if we get less people that want to open more, we can invest our time more into those people rather than having 100 people all with one individual restaurant screaming and asking questions. I'd rather have 15 people with five or six each. We mm -hmm. can invest much more time into those people, much more time into training for those people. And I just think that's that's the way I want to go. I want to go with the people that want to invest more money in our product, and we can invest more time in them delivering our products. Mm -hmm. And what sort of people are you looking for for this in terms of like, is it people that want to make a lot of money or is it people that, do they have to, they have to buy into the whole vision of, of and the product and, and the experience? For me, everyone's out to make money. We're in business to make money. Profit and money is almost, well, the profit is a byproduct of your, of your product. The level of profit comes from the quality of your product. You can compare phones, you can compare cars, you can do it in any, any form you want. You know, you sell our product for a higher sale cost. We are working our sales off to get that actual cost as low as we can with still delivering the best products out there. And we're doing well, we're, you know, we're getting there, we're, we're making high profit margin products for people, you know, no waste, factor that in straight away. You know, and, and people are making 80% more on certain pizzas. And we're in Worsley, we know we're a village, but we, we can't service the amount of desire and um, demand that's coming through our phones. We need to open, we already need to open a new a takeaway. 
we were already looking at a dark kitchen. We were looking at another restaurant and that's going to be company owned. So if we're doing that now after six months, these people that are going to take the franchise on in London, Birmingham, Leeds, Scotland, wherever they are, they're going to get the demand because we know that we've created the product. We've got the brand. Everyone loves it. They come in they say, wow, this is great. Whatever your building looks like, we can get it designed because we've got graffiti of them, yellow neon, black burnt wood, brick walls, the chairs are on brand. When you put all those things into play in, the right, in any building, any square, rectangle, circle you want, it'll just look like a leopard pie. And then you deliver those products with that quality at that price point. And the profit's there, make as much as you want. Fantastic. What does competition look like in the pizza sort of takeaway and pizza space in the UK? Competition, yeah, there are a few of them are doing, I think, a really good job. But they are no, no near the processes we are using. Uh, most of them, they do a direct dough, like no preferment, no uh, preferment on the on the process, which we believe is a major major uh, thing to take in consideration if you want a digestible dough. We know the numbers they're doing, and we know there is big market there for us. I think the thing for me is there's pizza places everywhere. There's always been pizza places. It's, it's almost a recession-proof business. And I think what, what we're noticing now, slowly, is that there is an increase in a quality of pizza place, isn't there? Like, yeah. There's more people making an effort to make the product better. Mm -hmm. They just, like I said about direct dough, they're just, they're just doing, they're doing the next basic step. The, the easiest way to create a better product. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're one level above that. We're creating a better product than their better product. Mm -hmm. And the only difference mm -hmm. really is time. Yeah. We're putting more time into it. I think you'll agree. I agree. It's not, we're doing a three day dough. Mm -hmm. Some people might do three day dough in a little bakery somewhere that sells some pizzas, but there's no, there's no, there's no chain around the country that's doing 72 hour fermented dough. It doesn't exist. Yeah. It's also about you under, understanding the flowers you're using because anyone could make a 72 hours dough, but actually understanding the level of proteins that is inside the flour to understand which one is the right one to follow that process. Yeah. I think that makes us different because we do use high protein level flour for our preferment and then a bit weaker flour for our refresh, which is understanding of, of the product. It's the process, isn't it, as well? Like we, we're not going to, but we could tell, I could tell you our recipe. You wouldn't be able to go home and make our pizza. Mm -hmm. It's about more than that. It's about the skill, isn't it? Yeah. It's 100% about the skill. You could put flour, water, yeast into a mixer, mix it, and put it into an oven and you'll, you'll make a pizza. Mm -hmm. I will guarantee you'll make a pizza, but it wouldn't be the right pizza. Yeah. For so. us, yeah. Also about the temperatures, when we, when we make the dough, we, we need to stay in certain temperatures so the fermentation is like we want. Mm -hmm. So in summer and in winter, it changes slightly, just to adapt ourselves to the room temperatures and make make the pizza feel like comfortable in the environment. Yeah. It's just a skill. It's a skill that takes time to learn with mathematics. You know, it's an equation, isn't it? It's a mathematical equation to get to where we want to get to. You know, different things, temperatures, water temperatures, room temperatures, all these things. Then multiply that by time and temperature again. Because at the end, yeah, we are transforming flour water, yeast and salt, that they are very basic products to the best pizza. So that, yeah, the major thing in there is skills and yeah. knowledge. Because mm -hmm. from, yeah, a very simple product, yeah. replicate what we're doing, I think is. Yeah, we get people all the time saying, can we buy you dough? People that come in that have bought pizza ovens at home in the garden, they like, how, how'd you do it? I've been tearing my hair out for months about this dough. I'm trying to make this. I've tried to do, I've tried to do bigger. Can't do it. It doesn't work. How are you doing it? 
and you can tell them how we do it, but they can't do it mm -hmm. because it's just experience. And again, when we franchise, with the franchise, that's why one of our biggest things, we're not just going to throw you into a restaurant or a takeaway. It's going to, all your staff will go through a leopard pie training academy. So they've got the right level of skills. They've got the knowledge. They've got the education to get them where they need to get to, to create the product that we need to create to push around the country and the world. Fantastic. How is the franchisee going to benefit from this great product? We know we're in a village right now and the demand in a village is high. Mm -hmm. Just put it into a town center and see what you're going to do. So what does, what does the near future and the sort of distant future look like for Leopard Pie? So the weekend just gone, we've been to see a new potential restaurant premises. We are talking about a dark kitchen just because we can't facilitate the needs of people here. We can't send out enough takeaways. And then we're also looking at a takeaway venue at the moment. Um, all potentially within 2022 still. Um, but we are going to be concentrating over the next six months to a year on bolstering the franchise offering and getting that out to the right people out there. We know the right people are out there. We know people that have bought other franchises that haven't worked in pizza still, that are interested. We've got people that are interested in takeaways. I've got people in Australia that I know that want to open a leopard pie in Australia, but we have to walk before we can run. We need to open a pilot, two pilots, find the right people we can work with, find the right people that are going to invest the right level of money and the right time and attention to detail into a leopard pie. And it'll just, like we've organically grown, it will just organically grow. It will just get to where it needs to get to on mm -hmm. its own, I think. The desire will mm -hmm. be there. We're not even shouting about it yet. We're not even talking about it yet. Mm -hmm. As soon as we do. I think it's a matter of time that everyone will associate leopard pie to the best pizza in Manchester first and then all over the country. We're, we are delivering the best pizza in Manchester now. We're delivering the best pizza in the UK through third parties delivering our products. It's it's going to get there. It, like I was saying, it's just a matter of time. We will become the best in the country. I want to become the best pizza in the world. Let's see what we can do. I know there is big global brands out there that need knocking off the perch because they deliver a crap product. So it's time to flip it all. It's time to bring a proper, a proper product to the market and send it around the world. If someone's interested in, in this offer, in leopard pies and starting their own leopard pie, um, where should they go? So we'll have a, a micro site that sits behind our website called leopardpiefranchise.co.uk. In there, you'll find our prospectus, all the facts, figures, information that you'll need to make an offer, everything that all the costs involved to start your process to become a leopard pie franchisee. Fantastic. Cool. Great. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Thank you for watching episode three of the UK Franchising Podcast. Please like and subscribe and share this with anyone you think that might be relevant to. To learn more about the Leopard Pie franchise opportunity, like Lee said, uh, go to leopardpie.co.uk or click the link in the description. We'll be launching the website in Perspectives shortly. Um, if you do see a page with just the form on, that means that we've not quite launched yet, but you can leave your information there and we'll send you the Perspectives as soon as we get it out. Thanks again for watching the podcast. We'll be doing a lot more of these franchise or on-site sort of interviews with a little higher production value. So if you enjoyed that, let us know below. Thanks.